Good morning, St. Andrews. Thank you for joining us for our online service this morning. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, blessed be God's, God's kingdom, kingdom, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace, peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. The Word of the Lord. The psalm for this week is Psalm 96, verses 1 through 13, and it's found on page 852 in the Book of Common Prayer and in your virtual bulletin. We will say this psalm in unison. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols, but it is the Lord who made the heavens. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. Oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples, 
Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes, when he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the Church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth 
In the meditations of each heart, be holy and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So um, I come from a porch sitting people. Our summers were spent on my grandparents' back porch in Odessa. Uh, most of my summer memories are on their porch. And every now and then, uh, we would make the journey up to the family farm in southern Indiana, and we would inevitably find ourselves sitting on my great-grandparents' porch as well, uh, talking, telling stories, listening to music. I love a good porch. And so I have this idea. I want to turn half of our back porch at our home here into a patio pub, you know, a place to relax, to unwind, to invite folks over to watch the Dallas Cowboys play in the fall and the Texas Rangers play in the spring and the summer. I mean, we could watch other teams too, as long as they're playing the Cowboys or the Rangers. So I started researching online some designs to build my own bar top. Well, just one hour of research, and now thanks to Big Brother's tracking algorithm or whatever you want to call it every time i'm on social media i am assaulted by advertisement after advertisement for bar supplies companies and furniture companies and beer kegerator lines it's very eerie you know how many advertisements you and i take in with all of our senses on a daily basis five thousand Research shows we take in 5,000 advertisements a day, each one offering us a different image or a different symbol, something recognizable or resonating to lure, to coax, or convince us that we need this thing or, or we need that thing. And all these images and symbols in some way shape our identity. They do. Images shape our identity. Writer Wallace Stegner says that we live our lives by patterns and forms. 5,000 advertisements a day, that's quite a pattern. Patterns, forms, images, and symbols. Our gospel reading this morning has that famous remark often translated, Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. And I'd like to suggest this morning that maybe this story isn't so much about Jesus providing us with this sound and savvy economic philosophy or some kind of paradigm for church and world politics as it has often been used. I'd like to suggest this morning it might be more about Jesus calling our attentions to something. Calling our attentions to this interplay between image and identity. Up to this point, Jesus has been telling stories, stories that confront the religious program of the Pharisees and those in the upper echelons of Jewish religious society. And now they are fed up. They are fed up with Jesus. They feel threatened by Jesus and want nothing more than to trap Jesus. That's what our gospel reading clearly states, right? The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him. It's like for them, Jesus is this wild animal of a man. And he's going out into the highways and into the byways, and he's proclaiming this wild love of God, a God no religious program can contain. So you have to trap him. You have to find a way to shut him up. But they've just spent the last several encounters with Jesus having all of their questions turned around back on them through parables and stories and allegories. They're embarrassed. They're tired of looking bad in front of their congregations. So what do they do? The Pharisees send their disciples. The Pharisees send their own disciples. They say, hey, you know what? We've got all these interns standing around fresh out of school. They're eager to prove. They're eager to please. Let's send them to Jesus. Maybe they can figure out a way to trap Jesus. And you know what would be really good? Let's get them together with some of Herod's disciples, all those political wannabes that are just standing around. They have something to prove, too. I know. I know we typically don't mix with these guys. We don't really like them very much. But now, now we have something in common, trapping this Jesus. Doesn't that create an interesting scene? Here we have the disciples of the Pharisees and the disciples of Herod. 
a group of religious blowhards and political windbags surrounding the disciples of Jesus, and, and there in the middle sits Jesus. And what are the first words out of their mouths to Jesus? Praise and, and flattery. They're laying it on thick. Oh, Jesus, we know you're so wise and you're such a great teacher and you don't show deference. And has anyone told you that tunic really brings out the color of your eyes? Why? Because when you're the disciples of religion and politics, that's the language you're used to. The language of ego stroking, the language that lets you climb the ladder. But here's the deal. It's not the language of Jesus and the discipleship that follows after him. And these cats are trying to hide a trick question inside of all of their flattery. So they ask Jesus, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Pretty shrewd, right? I mean, if he answers in the affirmative, Jesus loses trust with the people that are burdened by those taxes. And if he answers in the negative, he commits treason against Rome. But watch what Jesus does. And, and here's how I kind of like to imagine it. He asks someone for a coin and they bring him a coin. And sitting next to him is this kid with a ball cap and peanut butter and jelly spread all over his face. And Jesus does that disappearing coin trick that, you know, adults sometimes know how to do with a coin. And then he makes it reappear behind the little kid's ear. And maybe he flips it up and down and slaps it on the back of his wrist a couple of times. And on one flip, he slaps it on the back of his wrist and he sees an image of Caesar. And it reads, Tiberius Augustus, son of the divine. And then Jesus flips it up again a couple of times till it lands on the other side on the back of his wrist. And it says, with the same image of Caesar, our great high priest. And there's Jesus, the son of God, in who Paul wrote, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. The one in whom the author of Hebrews will one day refer to as the universe's great high priest. He's sitting there looking at this little coin of this little image of the little face claiming a godlike status. And he looks up and he asks, so whose image is this on the coin? Well, that's the emperor. That's Caesar. Well, then. Jesus says, he can have it. And he flips the coin over to the kid. Now, if you're a disciple of Herod, you know he hasn't committed treason. But it becomes a little more complicated for the Pharisees because they are devout Jews. That's what their identity is all about, to be holy and pure and devout. But any good Jew in the crowd that day knows the answer to the question, what belongs to God? Everything. Everything. In other words, Caesar can have his measly little tribute, his little coin bearing his little face, but you, you bear the image of God. Caesar wants your tax. God wants your life. Caesar wants to show you his empire. God wants to show you a love that is so tender and yet so fierce it has brought empires to their knees. So give to Caesar the things that belong to Caesar, but give to God what belongs to God. Everything. And yet again, those who tried to trap him leave Jesus stunned and speechless. Because when everything belongs to God, you can't trap the wildness of God. 5,000 images. 5,000 images you and I are bombarded with on a daily basis. Images that compete for our loyalties. Images that attempt to define our identities. Tell us who we are and whose we are. But we, we belong to God. We belong to the God whose image we all bear. And our identity is the one who bore that image all the way to the cross. Severus of Antioch was a 5th century bishop and scholar, and I love these words he wrote. He wrote, the image of God is not depicted on gold or silver. It is imaged in humanity, a humanity created in love to reflect 
God's glory. God is imaged in a humanity created in love to reflect God's glory. Isn't that something? That God chose you. God chose you. There are the images that try to shape us. And then there is the image that truly shapes us. May we be a people shaped by the image of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. now confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people of Form 6, found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 392 or your online bulletin. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. Let us pray for the human family. O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family, especially the city of Amarillo, the city of Canyon, and the Texas Panhandle. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts break down the walls that separate us, unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Scott, our bishop. For Jared, our priest. For Chris, Dee Dee, Dave, Mildred, Courtney, Tammy, and Miriam, our deacons. For the seventh province, Larry Benfield, Victoria Hart, Joe Ann Rochelle, and Jim McDonald. And for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. For the healing of the divisions in our social fabric, 
that we may recognize each human as a child of God, turned from the violence plaguing our society, and be freed from any arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts, so that we may be united one to another in bonds of love, and work through our struggles and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially for Bill and Deacon Roseanne Smith, small businesses, first responders, retail workers, and healthcare providers, the people of Amarillo Canyon and Texas Panhandle, PJ Pronger, John Mendler, Carolyn Davis, Dr. Robin Kane, Deanne and Perry Gilmore, David and Beverly Fry, Jenna, Jorge Jaquez, Gay Harris, Rob and Kathy McKay, Pam Kirby, Jay, Jerry and Barbara Avant, Lizzie Chestnut Bentley, the Chestnut family and the Bentley family, Caden, Jenna, David, Curry Smith, Bud Sneed, the Harris family, the Rimmer family, Jason Mace and the Mace family, Abel Carrillo, the Ish family, Buddy and Michaela Stevens, Doug and Heather Voran, Aaron Kinney, Keelan Bain, and Louis Gunter. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. For those serving in the armed forces, especially Stephen, Garrett, Nelson, Casey, Brandon, Josh, Billy, Larry, Grayson, Aaron, Colby, Ransom, Ben, Arden, Kalen, Stephen, Peyton, Blue, Dan, Laramie, Daniel, Kelly, Danny, Steve, Braxton, Sam, James, Robert, Levi, Trey, Joe, James, Chris, Gary, Luke, and Philip. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially for the community of St. Andrews, our parishioners, family, friends, and staff, especially Jennifer, and all students and schools, especially St. Andrews School, Heladuro High School, Fannin Middle School, Sleepy Hollow Elementary School, Greenways Intermediate School, and Amarillo Collegiate Academy. We will exalt you, O God, our King. Your mercy is We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially Linda Rimmer and Glenn Harris. Lord, let your love and kindness be upon them. Put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. 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 Peace to all of you out there, and I hope you're having a great morning. Uh, we have a couple of announcements before we go into our, looks like we have some birthdays in our children's blessing. Uh, we have actually one announcement, and I'm going to invite Archdeacon Chris Rampelmeyer up here to offer that announcement. And I'll get out of the way. Here. Mm -hmm. oh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> they really don't want me to make this announcement. Uh, my announcement today is about the Angel Tree Project, which is an important tradition at St. Andrews. Each year, volunteers from our church have purchased Christmas presents for children who have an incarcerated parent. While the members of the church pay for, buy, and wrap each present, we give the presents in the names of the incarcerated parents, not in our names and not in the name of St. Andrews. 
the total amount spent on each child is between $25 and $35. We usually throw a wonderful Christmas party for these children, complete with the real Santa Claus and a catered brunch. This year we are going to continue this tradition as need sadly has not diminished. Unfortunately, we will not have our Christmas party. We will be sponsoring 50 children this year. If it is your ministry, please volunteer to pay for, purchase, wrap, and or deliver a Christmas present. You do not have to do all of these things. Some are called to donate money to sponsor a child. Some are called to shop for the presents and some to wrap them. Still others love to take the presents to the children. If you would like to volunteer, please contact me or the church. We will soon be getting the names of the children and learning what each would like for Christmas. We will provide the volunteers with the gift ideas for each child. Thank you for considering being a blessing for a child at Christmas. And if it wasn't for this cause, I would hate to be talking about Christmas even before Halloween, but this really is worthy. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate that. Hope you guys get involved. I love that that's an ongoing tradition here at St. Andrews. Okay, we have uh, a couple of birthdays. Speaking of Rampelmeyer, we have a birthday for Ms. H.Q. Rampelmeyer. And then we also have a birthday for Johnny Moore. So, all right, let us uh, say together uh, our birthday blessing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Right, and now moving on to our children's blessing, let us all pray. Father of generous fathers, we thank you for the gift of children. With each child, you refresh your covenant with our father Abraham. In each child, you confirm our call to be stewards of creation. We pray your blessing on each child here today. Teach them to love courage and to shun fear. Sharpen their eyes to see you at work in your world. Loosen their tongues to speak words of love and reconciliation. Turn their faces in charity toward their neighbors, and fill each one with confidence in your steadfast love. This we ask, blessed Father, in the name of your child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
invite you to stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give God, God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, power and mind, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. The night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Him, and with Him, and in Him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though many of us have not consumed these gifts of bread and wine, we thank you that we all have received the sacrament of Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, and all other benefits of Christ's passion. Grant that we may continue forever in the risen life of our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.